Welcome back nerds, we are at it again. Today's video we are going to be taking a look at finishing up our interactions with both the Koopa and the Goombas. We'll be adding the background which will have its own camera and move at a different pace than our Mario object. And we'll be adding the combo system for stacking up multiple bounces or shell hits. So let's get to it. We're going to start off with giving that force bump when you land on top of enemies. This will make it seem a bit more realistic as well as setting us up for later when we do the combo points. And the goal of this is to have a tiny force bounce if you land on them, but then have a full size jump if you land on them while holding jump. And taking a look at our code, the first thing we want to think about while creating our new conditions is what the criteria is for meeting the condition. So we want to bounce off of enemies. And this should only happen when we are falling on the enemy, which we already have the condition for. So it's going to fit right into our Mario's on collision with Goomba and Mario's on collision with Koopa while falling. And we're going to create one for if we're holding down jump, and that'll be a full size jump. Then we'll have another condition for if we are not holding down jump, and that'll be a four smaller jump. And I'll be using 120 pixels. So now that we've added those eight lines of code, and we go and check our preview, everything looks great on the Goombas. But we haven't done anything yet for the Koopas. And while eight lines of code is not a lot to add, when you take into account that there's 78 types of enemies in Super Mario World, you don't want to have to re-add those eight lines every time you need to land on a new type of enemy. Plus, what if 122 pixels is not the height we want? we'd have to go into each different enemy and edit that 120 pixels to our new pixel amount. This is a term known as brittle code, and we try our best to avoid it. In this scenario, the easiest way to do that is to create a function, which will make our Mario character bounce, and then we just call that function whenever we land on an enemy. This way, it's just one line of code each time we have a new enemy type, and if we want to edit it, we just edit the function. Additionally, while we were testing our bounce, we saw that our points for our Koopas were coming up over our Goombas, and that's just a mistake we made in our code. And that's a quick fix of switching from our Goomba XY to our Koopa XY. All right, let's go ahead and turn our bounce conditions into a function. We're going to select both the conditions that we want. Right click and select extract events into a function. And this will bring up a pre-filled out function creator. And I won't be going into any detail on what these all mean since it's my first time using it as well. I'm just happy that it is quite simple to use and with very minimal struggling I was able to fill in each required section and then have my function. And then we can go ahead and place that code inside the Mario's colliding with a Goomba while falling condition as well as Mario's colliding with a Koopa. Now we have two lines of code that takes care of the 16 it would have required to do without the function. And now if you've tested your code, when you end up small bouncing off of enemies, you keep that small bounce maximum jump height. So we need to create a condition that changes Mario back to his normal jump height after he's done bouncing. So at this point, we are going to create a condition for Mario is on floor, and we're just going to set him back to 320 jump speed. And since we're dealing with jumping, now seems like a great time to go in and fix our animations. We need both a jump and a fall animation for Mario. And the main difference between the two is the jump will have that fist in the air over the top right of his head. And then we can add those both to our animations. And we have our jump. And then our fall, both with loop turned off and the speed does not matter since they're single animation. And now to actually use those animations, we'll have to set conditions. And the platformer object has built in checks for whether you're jumping or falling. So we'll simply use an is jumping to set to jump and an is falling to set to fall. And at this point, our event sheet is starting to get quite large and we have several lines of different animation code and movement code for Mario. So I'm going to go ahead and click where it says add on the bottom right corner and add a new group and I'm going to call it Mario visuals. I'm going to grab each condition that affects Mario visually and drag it into there. And this won't change the code at all, but now I can minimize the Mario visual group, which gives me all my room back and also makes it very easy for me to find this code later. All right, let's get those beach Koopas into play. We're going to need three different animations. We're going to have the sliding Koopa, an idle Koopa, 
and a walking Koopa, which is going to use the idle for the first step and then a single foot move, just like our Mario did. And we won't worry about the shell kickback mechanic yet, seeing as we don't even have the shell kick for our Mario, but it's definitely something we'll need to remember to come back to later on. And I went ahead and just added all three of them to the Koopa object. And after thinking about it for a little bit, I decided it'd be better to have the Beach Koopas as their own object. And the easiest way to do this is to duplicate the Koopa and then just remove the Beach Koopa animations from our old Koopa and remove the Koopa animations from our new Beach Koopa object. Now when Mario lands on our Koopa, when we create the shell, we also want to create the Beach Koopa. And we can create that on top of the Koopa XY. And then we need to start off by making our Beach Koopa slide. And we're going to use a timer for this. And in order to verify our timer only went once, we're also going to use a boolean. And since we already have a boolean on our Beach Koopa from when we copied over the normal Koopa, we're just going to change that name to timer started. Then in our code, we are going to add a condition for the animation of Beach Koopa is BK slide. And then we're going to check that that boolean variable timer started is set to false. Then we're going to go ahead and start a timer called slide time. And we're going to set that timer started variable to true. And now this way, our condition doesn't continuously repeat. And we don't have to use trigger once because that will mess up when we use multiple instances at the same time. Then we're going to have two different conditions to check how long the timer has been going. The first condition will be while we are under 0.75 seconds. And while this is true, we're going to change the current horizontal speed of our Beach Koopa to 200 minus how much slide time's gone by times 250. And this will make it so at first we're going that full 200 horizontal speed, and then it quickly slows down as if there's resistance from sliding. And for this to happen, we also need to change the maximum horizontal speed of the Beach Koopa up to 200 since it still has the 64 move speed locked in from when we made the Koopa. And then the other timer will be once we're over 1.5 seconds. And then we're going to set the Beach Koopa to BK idle. And then also set our maximum speed back down to 64. So at this point you should have three completely new events as well as one additional action in your Mario is Falling on Koopa event. Now this setup will push out the Beach Koopas to the right 100% of the time, but let's make it more dynamic. We're going to start off adding a left or right variable. This is going to be a number variable, and we're going to set it off to 1. And then inside of our Mario is Falling on top of Koopa, where we create the Beach Koopa, we're going to compare the X position of Mario, and if it is less than, the X position of our Beach Koopa, then we're going to keep that variable as 1. And if it's greater than, we're going to set it to negative 1. And now we take that variable and we multiply our horizon speed that we're pushing the Beach Koopa with, making it either a negative or positive value. And this means if we're on the left side, the Koopa is going to push off to the right. And if we're on the right side, the Beach Koopa is going to push off to the left. All right, let's add the multiplying to our points. We're going to start out with a new variable called multiplier on our Mario object. And this is going to start off as 1. And then inside of our events, under Mario Visual, where we reset the jump speed to 320, we're also going to reset Mario's multiplier object back down to 1. And then inside any code where we add points, instead of adding 200, we're going to add 200 times our Mario variable multiplier. And the same with our text object. And keep in mind, this is a string, so we have to do two string and then enclose the 200 times the multiplier. And for now, we'll do that in both our Goomba and our Koopa events. And then we need to add a multiplier times two for each time we kill an enemy. And then we have it. And now for kicking turtle shells, we're going to need to create a timer on our Koopa. And we're going to name this delay. And since you create the shell by colliding with Koopa, you're technically already colliding with the shell. 
So we need to put a small delay that forces it to check after you've had time to bounce off. So we're going to make sure delay has run for 0.3 seconds while we are still colliding with the Koopa while the Koopa is playing shell. So if all those three conditions are met. And we're going to put a stop to this rabbit hole right here. We're going to keep the three conditions I just explained and we're going to replace everything that comes after. So the problem here is GDevelop does not have a good built-in instance versus instance. And what this means is when we turn our Koopas into shells and then we try to attack other enemies with them, we're comparing a Koopa with a Koopa, one being in shell, one being not in shell. And when we try to select the one that's not in shell to kill and the one that's in shell to continue moving along, we either select both or select none. And instead of building in a bunch of workarounds, we're just going to nip it in the butt now. And we're just going to turn the shell into its own object as soon as we hit it. This way we can keep the shell as a Koopa for when we need to make the Koopas hit their uh, regen stage where they pop back out of their shell. But otherwise, once we get them moving, they'll become weapons and will no longer be Koopas. So taking a look at our scene, we have no changes to the Koopa. We are still keeping that shell. And then we're adding a new object, which is going to be shell attack. And this is going to have four different variables, three booleans and one number, which will be done the same way as the multiplier on our Mario. And then in our code, we have the code we just built. And that's now disabled to show the differences between the two, because right below we have the same condition. And then as sub events, we have again the same conditions, except this time I am creating that new shell attack and I'm placing it directly on top of the Koopa X and Y. And then depending on what side of the Koopa I'm on, I set the Boolean for right or left to decide the direction that the shell will travel. And then we go ahead and delete that old Koopa. And just below that, we have a comparison for on collision with enemies. And here we're gonna verify that it is moving. This way, if the Koopas walk into a shell that's just sitting there, it's not gonna kill them. It's only gonna kill them if we have that moving set, which only happens if we kick it with our Mario. And then it's gonna use all the same score tracking that we already built in above. And of course, we're gonna change everything to have the shell attack multiplier uh, buffing up each time it hits a new person until that shell is no longer in play. And last, we have a check on all our shell attack objects. This just says if left is true, then move the shell left, and if right is true, move it right. All right, now that our shells are certified killing machines, we're gonna make some edits to our map. So I'm gonna drag out the ground a little bit to the left just so it makes it to the edge of the screen. And now I'm gonna want to add a background that moves at a slower pace than our Mario moves so it looks farther away, and it needs to cover the entire Y axis. It'll move slower than our x-axis moves so it doesn't have to quite fit the whole map. As of now there's not any set dimensions but I drew up a 640 by 276 background that will work for now and then later on we can replace them with uh, something a little nicer. So we're gonna drag that new object out and make sure it covers our complete y-axis and starts to the left of our screen and then goes far off to the right and we're gonna add a new layer. You can just rename that something like far background then we're going to want to drag that layer to the bottom. That way it's behind everything. So now when we double click on our object and change the layer from base layer to far background, you can see it moves behind everything. And that's just based on the layer stacking. Now we'll go into that far background and we can add a smooth camera. And again, we're going to set these catch up speeds to three. So they pretty much stay directly on top of us. And in our code, we are going to ignore the condition. We want this to always happen. And we're just going to set the offset of X and we want that to maintain Mario's X divided by five, meaning every time Mario moves five pixels, our far background is only going to move one pixel. All right, everybody, thank you for joining. That's all the time we have today. If you're interested in following along further, make sure you hit that notification button if you haven't already. In our upcoming video, I plan on working on furthering some of the stage, filling out our ground, adding bricks and question mark blocks, and the ability to grab and throw our flipped Galoombas and turtle shells. As always, if you bumped into any issues with the code, let me know down in the comments below. I'll be happy to help out. And until next time, peace.